Good morning, everybody. Let's talk about your best you here on Iowa Live this morning. And of course, we always love checking in with Sherry Clark from Fork in the Road, who yeah, has an important topic. Good to have topic. you here today. Thank you. Yeah. Good to be here. An important topic for this time of year. It's fun to talk about the festivities and the lights and the cooking and coming together. But there's some other things you want to think about as we're approaching the holidays. Yeah, there are some of us who are, have experienced loss during the holiday season, either leading up to it or, you know, there's no expiration date on loss. It, it, we we miss the people who are not there with us mm -hmm. when we ha have these special occasions. And I wanted to talk today about that just a little bit because it's one of those things that we feel like we should be able to buck up, you know, like suck it up and get on through. And the reality is there is pain there. So I wanted to talk about that just a little bit today. And I want to start by asking you guys, do you have, have you experienced loss and felt that feeling of the first Christmas without someone? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. Think, I think a lot of people can relate uh, to that. And it doesn't, as you said, it doesn't have to be around the holidays. Just realizing someone that you love isn't Isn't present, there. exactly. Yeah. And it comes to the forefront now because the whole family comes back and there's an empty chair, which might be, so, uh, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about some traditions or things that have changed. If someone that was there had a special role in the family traditions and now they're not there to fulfill it, maybe it's time to take a look at changing some traditions or mm -hmm. adding some new ones. And I mentioned empty chairs. In my own family, the first year that we didn't have someone with us, we'd left an empty chair. And it wasn't to be sorrowful or to be macabre. It was, it was a sign of honor and respect. Mm -hmm. So the thing to remember, I think, is it is honorable, it is respectful to talk about the loved ones who have gone on before us. And, and, we, and we've heard that from organizations that do help, and especially around this time yeah. uh, when people, many are mourning. They say, don't be afraid to talk about it. A lot of people are like, it's you, know, okay. it, you know, it's like, don't bring it up, don't, bring, don't say the name. And it's like, no, it, actually Absolutely. it's better to recognize Well, and when talk. I brought Kleenex, I think it's not only just okay to talk about the person, but it's okay to just let it fly. <laughs> if you're feeling like you miss them a little bit, say it. I mean, how special is that? Because you're not the only one. And the other thing it, it does is remember, it, at Thanksgiving, Christmas, we have kids around. Mm -hmm. We are role modeling, but with all our behaviors for them, what things, wh what is okay and what's not okay. And if it's not okay to talk about someone that's passed, that sends a message to them about death, about loss, about grief, that maybe we don't want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so having that in, in the forefront of my the mind. The other thing is it's gift giving time. And so sometimes when we, somebody has experienced a loss, you're, you're kind of like, is it okay to be happy? Is it okay to celebrate? Is it okay to do something? And I think it's kind of neat to do something that marks the occasion. So down by you, Jackie, I brought a, yeah. a little angel. Um, and that would be like, for example, you could get a Christmas ornament or something mm -hmm. that represents the person and maybe talk about the person while you're uh, looking at the gift or giving the gift or whatever. Down near me, um, this was a gift that was a, a friend of mine, borrowed from a friend of mine. And I I didn't know this expression, but once I said it, everybody knows it except me. When a cardinal is near, an angel appears. Yep. So you guys knew that, and I didn't. I must have been left out of that one. So she was given a cardinal mug to commemorate the loss of someone. So those types of things. The teddy bear. I loved this as a gift idea. That was made by someone out of Grandpa's shirt. Yeah. and given yeah isn't that that's special? an amazing idea yeah yeah and so the person is always there i've heard of them using pillowcases and done that too so mm -hmm. that you can sweaters and yeah. yeah there's all kinds of ways to something nice. that makes that person be omnipresent so not being afraid of that so let's talk about the other kinds of losses that there are it's, it's not just family members well i was going to say uh uh not to cut you off sherry uh i love your idea of creating new traditions because the loss the biggest loss in my family was when my parents were divorced yes. uh, and that holiday afterwards. So no one died, right? but it wasn't the, the same. same. And there was a huge loss mm -hmm. in my eyes exactly. that, that next holiday season, but we created new traditions and yes. you learn what those new traditions are and you moved on. So there is different forms of loss yes. uh, in people's lives. It, exactly. And to acknowledge and recognize that and also to realize that not everybody processes it the same way. Yeah, While true. some people just seem like they can just move on and bounce on back and it's all good, other people might not be having quite an easy time with it. And the other thing is it comes in waves. So we, we tend to think about loss coming as a, we talk about the, the process of grieving 
It's not linear. It never is linear. We might think, well, you're in this phase, or you're in the anger, or right. you're in the denial, <laughs> or you're step. in the whatever. <laughs> right, exactly. It's not like that at all. In fact, you might skip a step and then go back and revisit, and it could be a year later. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always happen on the in the same time frame as what everybody else thinks. Mm -hmm. So just being mindful of that and allowing space, uh, not being afraid to talk to somebody. The other thing is, if you're the person that's on feeling like you're on shaky ground, maybe you felt the loss the hardest to be able to say to the host or hostess I'm gonna come I really want to be part of this and if I need to go I just want to have your a, a, a permission if you will in advance or your knowledge that if I'm having a rough time I, I may go and it's not any reflection at all nothing personal it's just the way that it, it's been going for me yeah so to be thoughtful about that and we were talking about you were talking about grief um, and lose a divorce we lose pets too. True. So let's not forget that that loss is one that also needs to be commemorated. And so this is a gift that um, I think is just really special. It's a, it's, it looks like a, just a little bracelet. It's a silver, and on the outside it's plain, and there's a little paw print on the side. And on the inside it says, once by my side, forever in my heart. Oh, very cute. And so this would be a perfect little gift yes. for someone who's lost a pet. And remember also that the pet grief or the grief of one loss can bring up grief from prior losses, so it can accumulate. Finally, let's talk about anticipatory grief, and let's, uh, let's agree not to do that. Sometimes we're with family members that are ill, that you're thinking to yourself, this could be the last, oh. we've had that, we've had, we all know, oh, yeah. we, when you have aging or someone with a bad diagnosis. So let's be in the now. Let's don't talk about, <laughs> this I could think. be their last Christmas. That's we all know that. thing to think about. <laughs> yeah, so why don't we just be in the here and now and in the moment with those people and enjoy the things that we have because it's true. You don't really know and appreciate what you have until it's gone. And it's not gone now, so let's enjoy it and mm -hmm. celebrate it. Remembering that grief lowers our immunity system, so taking care of ourselves in the process and just realizing that this is what we have. We're here. It is a holiday season. There's mixtures of feelings. Just go with it. Yeah. And everybody does it different. Yes. Everybody, because I know I've w with friends or that had, they just want to forget the holidays completely and yeah. just let them pass. And mm -hmm. maybe that's not try to maybe encourage them to still, but yet respect Respectfully. how they want. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Allow space. Make the make the invitation. Maybe make it a second time because the first time the invitation might feel like I can't. Just, it would be. I just don't want to do this. Yeah, exactly. But then, if you as you get a little bit closer to say, you know, the the offer doesn't expire, and if you just show up on my doorstep and knock, we're going to welcome you in with open arms. What a blessing that mm -hmm. is, even for the person to know that. Yeah, yeah. and then that it is okay to knock. You know, to some people they have shame. Oh, well, you need to get Ex out, and you should have. You know, but to just. Yeah. Exactly. And and let's love each other before we're gone. Wonderful always, advice. always good advice. Yes. If people want to know more, maybe they want to share some stories with you or they want to follow back because you gave us some great advice how to take care of ourselves Absolutely. Uh, last week. <laughs> uh, if they want to revisit that as well, you always have wonderful advice, as Michelle said. How can they learn more? Well, email me at info at fork road.com or visit my website, which is www.fork road.com. And, and do share your stories with me. They're special to me as well. Yeah. Love it. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, a wonderful topic, especially around the holidays. The holidays can be tough for yes, people. Yes, they can. <coughs>